What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode, let me just say this, first of all. What the... (laughs) What was the point of this old Betsy Frank crap today? Like, what was the point? Let me just say this, first of all. All the actors in this storyline are knocking it out the park. Let me just put... I'm going to give credit where credit is due. They're killing the storyline. Uh, Roger Howarth, they're all killing it. You know, John Lindstrom, who plays Kevin, they're all killing it. The lady who plays Betsy Frank, the emotional scenes is like, you know, they're killing it. But my question is really like, there was really no movement in this storyline today. Today should have been the day where we saw some revelations, you know, where the truth came out because they had plenty of time to put the truth out there. I don't get why they're dragging it out this much. I mean, we finally got Betsy in Port Charles. She's face-to-face with Franco. You know, she's in the PCPD interrogation room with Kevin and Dante and Jordan. She could have easily said what happened. I think she told Kevin what happened, you know, as far as being in the you know PCPD when they were in the interrogation room. I think she revealed to him what happened. That's why he came out and said she was in a state of shock. I think she told him what happened, but he can't tell them what she told him or the public for that matter. Dr. Patient Confidentiality. Um, I'm just ready for the truth to come out. Yeah, I'm just like trying to figure it out. Like, why are they taking their precious time with this storyline? Like today... If you were going to tell the secret, today was the day to reveal it. I'm just saying, like, because you had Betsy, you had Franco, hell, even Drew was on this episode. Today was the day to reveal it. You had a whole hour. And I felt like it was a wasted hour because there was no movement. I hate that. Especially when you got all the key players here. The only one missing is Jim Harvey, but you don't really need him right now to reveal whatever happened back in the day. You got the main characters right here, so reveal it already we could catch jim harvey later um but yeah it's like y'all dragging shit out for no reason basically it's been dragged out for months it's time to put this storyline to bed honestly asap because i'm getting bored with it um i actually liked the scene between sam and curtis today i did i liked it um you know curtis is a true friend I can understand why he's team Drew because he knew only Drew's version of Jason. He never knew the real Jason. So he's only known Drew as Jason Morgan. So it's understandable. But, um, you know, it's cool that Drew has a real friend. You know what I'm saying? Curtis is letting him crash at his place or whatever for a while till him and Sam figure out what they going to do. Um, Sam, I think, came to the realization that One, you know, the one lie that she told months ago when Jason came back, she had to tell 20 more lies because this is how the lying system works. When you tell one lie, just one lie, you have to tell 20 more lies to cover the first lie that you told. You know what I'm saying? It's like a chain reaction. You know, it's it's just crazy. Like, but Sam realized her errors and she realized that Jason was Jason months ago, but she just couldn't admit it to herself because she didn't want to hurt Drew, which is understandable. You know, she was being loyal to her dude. Understandable. You being loyal to your man. Cool. But loyalty, I, I, I mean, for me, loyalty and honesty are 50 50. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody to be loyal to me, but I also want you to be honest. So to me, that's 50-50. You know what I'm saying? I, I I know some people say I'd rather have loyalty over honesty or I'd rather have honesty over loyalty. Honestly, I need both. <laughs> that's just what it is. Relationship, friendship, I need both. If you can't give me loyalty and honesty, I don't trust you. I can't have... And, and, and I kind of get where Drew coming from is why Drew left her. Because she was not honest with him. Yeah, she was loyal to him. I will give her that. She gave him the 50%. She gave him that 50. But you didn't give him the other important part, which was the honesty. That's another 50. He needed both. He needed that 50-50. He needed both of them. 
You can't just give me half. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if you pick the wrong half, which is the loyalty part, it's like, I mean, I like I said, I need both. I need loyalty and I need honesty. She only gave him one, one out of the two. <laughs> and she chose loyalty. I respect that. But you still fucked up because you should have gave him the honesty too. No matter how his reaction was going to be. You know, be. She let this tension and all this bullshit, their happiness build up for months. You even remarried this man. I'm pretty sure deep down Drew felt like she still loved Jason. I'm pretty sure he knew. Of course he knew. You know what I'm saying? You can sense it. Because he has Drew's, he, Drew has Jason's memory. So he know the love that Jason and Sam had or still have. You know what I'm saying? So he, he feels it. He know. You know what I'm saying? But when she asked him to marry him, I mean, to marry her, and they got remarried, I think to him in his mind, it solidified that she was committed to him, that she was serious about him, and she was over Jason. I think once they got married again, to him, that meant, okay, she's over Jason. So now when she dropped this bomb on him, once he let his guard down, and he was like, okay, I won, I got her. You know what I'm saying? Once he felt, you know, you know, secure and confident that Jason wasn't going to no longer be a problem for them now that they got remarried and she went through with the wedding. He let his guard down. And as soon as he did, the other shoe dropped, which was she's still in love with Jason. She's in love with both of y'all. So I can understand why he walked out on her because I would have too. Even if I felt that she still had feelings for her ex, once you make a grand gesture, to me, that means, okay. You made your choice. That's probably how he felt at that time. Like, okay, she made her choice. But the other shoe dropped. And she told him the real. She finally was honest with him. I would have dropped her ass too. I'm just saying. But Kelly Monaco and Billy Miller are killing this storyline though. They're killing these scenes. I will give them that. The actors are fucking phenomenal. They're killing it. Because let me tell you something. All the actors that they have on GH are top notch. For the most... Well, not all, but... <laughs> You know, I don't like to, you know, I don't I don't talk junk about the actors or nothing like that. Some of the newbies that's on the show, they could use a little work in the acting department. I mean, I'm not a professional actor, but I have seen some quality acting. So I can say that I can have an, a, you know, an educated opinion on this, even though I'm not a professional actor. But still, you know, I've watched people like Angela Bassett and Lawrence Fishburne. You know what I'm saying? These are, you know, Cicely Tyson, phenomenal actors and actresses. So I know good acting when I see it, especially over there on Y&R and all that. They, you know, they got some good people over there. You know, Eric Braden, Peter Bergman, you know, they got some good people. So I know good acting when I see it. And Kelly Monaco and Billy Miller are just crushing these scenes. Um, but yeah, I felt bad for Drew, but my sympathy for him kind of went away today because as usual, he was drunk. Well, not as usual, but... He was drunk today, but still, as usual, he blamed Jason for everything, as fucking usual. This is my problem with Drew. Stop blaming this man for everything that happened in your life. You're mad at this man for reclaiming a life that was stolen from him. Who does that? I mean, really. I mean, like, seriously. He's always mad at Jason. J Let me tell you something. And I've said this a billion times. And I'll say it a billion and one times. I don't care. Jason was just as much a victim as Drew. Just as much. Jason did not ask to be shot. Jason did not ask to be held captive for five years. He didn't ask for none of that. Just like Drew didn't ask to be kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? None of you asked for this. But it happened. Why are you blaming him for how Sam feels? Then Drew keeps saying, oh, I have your memory, so I know how many times you hurt Sam and this, that, and the third. You're right. Jason did hurt Sam over the years. He did. But she hurt him, too. It was a two-way street. They hurt each other. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't one-sided. Um, it was just ridiculous. Like, total ridiculous. Him just, 
you know, picking at Jason all the time. It's like, think about it like this. If Jason did not get shot, everything that happened back in 2012 was a butterfly effect. It was a, it, it was a chain reaction. Everything that happened led off a chain reaction. When Faison shot Jason and he, you know, kidnapped him or whatever the case was, and then Drew got kidnapped, it set up a chain reaction. It set up a whole butterfly effect. Because Drew got swapped out with Jason. Think about it. Had none of that happened, had Faison not shot Jason, kidnapped Drew, kidnapped Jason, Drew would have never been in Port Charles. Drew would have never met Sam. Drew would have never had Scout. Drew would have probably never even known Oscar was his son. It's a butterfly effect. See what I'm saying? It's a chain fucking reaction. Had none of these events occurred, we wouldn't be seeing what we're seeing today. So, in a way, he should be happy. But, I don't see why he continuously blames Jason for things that are not, that are out of Jason's control. Jason, all he did was come back and reclaim his life. That's all he did. And if it wasn't for Jason, Drew would have never bought Aurora Media. Mind you, Jason was generous enough to let him keep it. He didn't even want the money back that Drew and Sam spent. He didn't want it. He was like, nah, they could keep it. But legally, he had to take some money. Um, but he had to take some money back. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a sticky situation. Drew didn't even say one word to Sam when they was at the police station, though. He did not say one word to her. Like, he just looked at her with an ice-cold look when she came to the jail to pay his fine. I told y'all Jason and Drew were going to get into a fight. I knew it. Let me tell you something. When you got tension like that, and you know the tension that Drew has with Jason, you know damn well they're they going to have to fight at some point. So I knew it was coming. I read the spoilers, so I knew <laughs> Even if without reading spoilers, I knew at some point they was going to get physical. I knew they were going to have to have a showdown. I knew it. And today was that day. I will say this. They fucked each other up. But if you look at Jason's face and you look at Drew's face, Jason, he kicked Drew ass. I will say that. I mean, both of their faces had bruises on it, but Drew's face looked worse. His face definitely looked worse than Jason's. I say, yeah, it looked like Jason got the better of your ass. <laughs> I was like, I knew it. I knew Jason was going to whoop his ass. I was like, uh. I knew Drew was going to give him, you know, a run for his money, but I knew Jason was going to eventually win that fight, though. And it looked like he won. Judging based off the bruises, Drew's face did look worse than Jason's. I'm just saying. Some of y'all may, you know, feel differently. That's your, you know, that I, that's my opinion. That's your opinion. Cool. But based off my opinion, Drew face looked worse. I'm just saying. But um anyway, what else happened today? Oh, Peter August. <laughs> I have to agree with some fans on this. I, I really do. I have to agree with some of y'all on this. I feel like they hired him Wes Ramsey because he's dating Laura Wright. I have to agree. I feel like that's the reason they hired him. And they gave him this position. Not taken away from his acting ability, but it's kind of coincidental that you get a good character well you know you get a good storyline on this show and you're actually dating one of the lead actresses on this show so it's kind of coincidental that all that fell into place and i heard the story how he met frank valentini in a parking lot <laughs> so it's kind of like you know not taking away from his acting ability like i said but it's like you know you put two and two together it's like come on now um he is a good actor i'm not gonna say he's not because he is but um, you pretty much got a high end. I mean, you're pretty much in a storyline with a lot of major players on this show. Like most newbies don't get that. I'm just saying, like they don't get to mix it up with the with the major league players that fast. But um, I I'm I know a lot of people want Maxi to eventually get with Peter. I have a problem with it because it's too soon after Nathan's death. You know what I'm saying? Plus she's still pregnant. I say give it some time. I understand everything that they're doing right now is for plot point, but it's like, come on now. Don't nobody move on that damn fast. I mean, her husband barely was in the ground. 
and all of a sudden she's moving on. Well, not moving on, but it's like, you know, we already know eventually it's going to happen. They're going to actually kiss, I'm pretty sure, at some point. But, um, so apparently Peter, um, got on the phone after Maxie left because Maxie wanted him to look into the money because, you know, the, the trust that Nathan set up for the baby because, you know, Nathan didn't really know anything about money and finances. So she just wanted him to, you know, put some people on it or whatever to see if they can invest it properly and, you know, look after the money. But um, I think what he did was he transferred money from his account into the trust account for the baby. I think everything he's doing right now for her and that baby is out of guilt because of what happened to Nathan. So I think he's honoring Nathan by, you know, taking care of Nathan's family, you know, but he's trying to subliminally do it. You know, he don't want Maxie to know. And, you know, I think it's a nice gesture. But like I said, the writers need to figure out what we're going to do with, with, with Peter. Are we going to make him evil, a gray character? More and more, it's looking like he's a gray character already. But I'm just saying it could change. Because um, Nina was already saying how she, you know, is skeptical of him or whatever. Because she walked in on his phone conversation when he was transferring the money. And, of course, she wanted to talk about her crimson budget and the revitalization of Port Charles that Ned wants to do. She stayed bitching about this budget. <laughs> about this budget for crimson. I'm like, Nina, I understand that she's passionate about Crimson, but Nina has expensive champagne taste. And when you have major taste like Nina has, it's like these companies can't afford it. I mean, they can, but they can't. Like, every division in a company has a budget. You know what I'm saying? And they can't afford to just be letting every division go over the budget. They would probably go bankrupt if they did. So it's like, chick, stick to the budget. This is why he gave your budget all those exotic photo shoots and, you know, location shoots that she wants to do. Because, you know, last time I think she had, where'd she go? Abu Dhabi. She went somewhere last time. You know how expensive it is to have a photo shoot in Abu Dhabi? That's expensive. Because you got to pay for everybody to go. All their hotel accommodations. That shit ain't cheap. Shit, first class plane ticket. Let me tell you something. If it was me and my company... And y'all wanted to go somewhere out of town to do a photo shoot? Listen, bitch. I would put your ass on a coach. You would be riding coach on Delta Airline. You would be on coach staying at the Motel 6 for two nights. And you better get that photo shoot done in two days. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anybody got no money to be putting y'all in no high-end hotel, first-class accommodations? You must be crazy. I'll get you a Greyhound bus ticket in a room at the Motel 6 where they leave the light on for you. I'm just saying. You ain't getting no first class over here. Shit. I ain't going into bankruptcy paying for your champagne taste. Must be crazy as all hell. Need to best stick to that budget. Shit. Because if you don't, I'll fire your ass and find somebody else who will. <laughs> I'm just saying, you better stick to that budget. Shit. With this fool in, in the office, in the president's office, please. Shit. We don't know how much money, this, you know, we don't know how long this money gonna last. All these taxes and shit. Better take that money. Better take that budget I gave you and work with it. Well, I can't lower it. I'm just saying, Peter, better boss up. Stop letting that woman run you. But um, Nina, she was upset because she seen Maxie and Peter or whatever get some takeout at the Metro Court. Because Maxie, you know, she's getting, um, I guess, her daughter, Georgie, is coming for a visit. So she didn't know if she wants to stay in the hotel or go back to the apartment I feel like she should go back to the apartment. Like, I understand she don't want to face Nathan's death, but it's time that you do. Like, it's time that you face the facts. I mean, I understand it's hard for her, but it's like living out of a hotel, it could be cool, but it's not in the long run. Like, even me, like, I'm, I would love to stay at a hotel, you know, a fancy hotel for a few nights, but it gets boring after, you know, being there for a few weeks, a few months. Hell no. You know, you need some place that you can call your own. I'm just saying, but, um, yeah, I don't really know how I feel about Peter at this point, about the character, I don't know, but anyway, hit the comment section, let me know what y'all thought about this episode, and I'll see y'all all later, peace, oh, don't forget, tonight, 8 o'clock, Roseanne, the reboot, 8 o'clock on ABC, I will be watching, and I'll see y'all all tomorrow, have a good day, peace.